Well, hello everyone. Once again, I'm here doing uh, some Excel dashboard work. In this case, I'm doing a kind of a different style here using wingdings. Now, for people who don't know what wingdings are, wingdings are really just a different kind of font. But instead of changing between Arial and Courier and Times New Roman or something, you're changing them to more symbol oriented. For example, here's J, K, and L, actual capital J, K, and L in, what is this, Calibri font. Here it is in Wingding font. Shall put on the capitals J, K, L. So that, in fact, is how it would display if I use that particular font called Wingdings. Now, knowing that's true, we can take advantage of that and actually turn it into a dashboard if we'd like. So that's going to be the trick. So how do we get this product, which I've already created? So I've created a product that's uh, instead of just having the usual slicers that I can use here, I can now slice based on symbols. In this case, I made the symbols. This is, you know, people who need lots, don't need much space, obviously very friendly people, people who need more space, and people who need lots of space who are very unfriendly types. Anyways, a bit of a stretch for the data interpretation, but this is just for fun and to show you how to do these slicers and wingding style. Use them obviously only where they make sense because they're not going to apply to your typical financial spreadsheet, but uh, they can add a little bit of different, a uh, little bit of fun to the dashboard. And to be honest, people will pay more attention to them. So obviously the key to success is knowing how the system uh, sees things and how it displays them. So we know basically J, capital J is smiley face um, in wingding format. So we can take advantage of that fact. So if I go over to the list of data that I happen to have just to play with, and it doesn't really matter in this case. So what I said is I'm using this column here. Um, so basically small is smiley, medium is kind of ambivalent, and the frowny face is for the large numbers. But it's, it's like I say, it's just totally arbitrary. Now, I've actually created the wingding column here. But how did I get it to do this? How did it know to put a wingding in regards to this number? Well, in this case, as I can, I'll show you up here, it's by using the, um, if statements. So essentially what I'm saying is in that column, if the number here is less than three, make it J. If it's less than 40, make it K. And if it's greater than 40, make it L. So essentially it's just converting numerics into, you know, J, K, or L. And now that I've got everything in J, K, or L groups, I can use those in my dashboards. Oops, pardon me. Now, just because you've made smiley faces in your spreadsheet doesn't mean they're going to come through on your slicers because the slicers have their own font controls. For example, if I just insert a uh, slicer here using that new column that I had created over on the uh, spreadsheet, as you can see, it's going J, K, and L because as far as the system's concerned, that's actually what's shown because that's the, that is the font that is attached to this slicer. So in order to turn this slicer into this slicer, you need to actually change the fonts in the slicer. And we do that by understanding how font slicers work in Excel. In other words, you have a standard set. You cannot modify the standard sets. In this case, the one up here has been selected. Um, I cannot change that. But what I can do is, and this is in, uh, covered in another video, is I can duplicate that. Let's give it a new name. Doesn't really matter. And now I'll just press OK. And now I have, in this case, created a new slicer that I can now modify. And of course, from here, I can start making changes. So if I wanted to make a change to the fonts, and this is the trick now with the slicers. Slicers have eight places where the fonts exist. So if you want to do a complete transformation, you're going to have to change each one of these, and they have to be done separately. There's no way around it. So each one you're going to pick. Um, again, this is where you can change the fonts. If you want to change to wingdings, I'll just do one for an example. Yeah, so again, it's changed it. But of course, if you, you notice that it still hasn't changed them for the other, it's only changed it when you actively pick it. There's still seven other 
ways the font these uh, slicers are displayed. You'll have to change all of those if you want them to react the same way. So it can take a bit of time, and you know, to do this. I mean, but it's not terribly difficult. If you, and again, you're only going to do this once in a while, and for effect, obviously, you can't imagine working entirely with font um, wingding slicers. And there are a couple of other, obviously, lots of symbols you could be using for wingdings. But again, so the process would be the same, just knowing which what character is behind the wingding, going into your slicer, making those required changes on your slicer to modify them, making the changes you want. In this case, if I say I, I also want to change the format of the border or the fill. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to use... Yeah, well, whatever. Not get creative. Orange. Going to change the outline. Again, I can change the head. Oh, basically, every element of a slicer can be modified once you create your own custom one. In this case, I've just changed all the fonts so that now, as the um, instead of pressing words, I'm just pressing these, but I know that what these relate to. Now, obviously, if you're going to do this, the buttons need to make somewhat sense. Otherwise, people have no clue what, what does this mean. So again, use them sparingly, but use them for effect. And it does kind of liven up a dashboard. It certainly gets people to look, which sometimes is all you really care about. So cheers for now.